All right. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. I am pretty great actually today because I have this finally in my possession. Um, so this is a, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a plastic kit. Um, it's designed by the guys over at UGL Land. Uh, they usually make resin conversion kits for Gunpla. Um, but this one is molded in plastic. Um, it's just a weapon. Um, it was meant to go with, I forget which one of their uh, resin conversion kits, um, but it was designed to go with one of them, but they sold it separately as well. And um, I've been looking for it for a while. Uh, there was a shop that was kind of near me that had it, that I had my eye on it there for a while. And then when I finally decided to buy it, it was gone. And so uh, I found this one, I had to have it shipped from overseas. Uh, the box is a little bit damaged here on the side, uh, but I've opened it up and everything inside is fine. Uh, it got stuck in customs for like almost a month. So uh, I was happy when it finally arrived yesterday. So I guess day before yesterday, actually. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, unbox it. Um, I haven't actually, I opened the box and looked inside, but I haven't done anything else really with it. Um, and it should be a fairly simple build, I think, um, but the detail on the molded parts looks really, really good. So um, I think it's a simple build, but it's going to look excellent. Um, we should probably like just take a look at the box here first. Um, like on the side here, it shows, if I can get this in frame, um, it shows the the main parts of it, right? It's got this like gun type weapon here that comes in three parts. And then it's got four of these blades and they all combine in a few different ways um, to make some different versions of this weapon. Um, so I'm not sure yet exactly what I'm gonna use this with. Uh, the original plan was actually to potentially use it with the Zero Gravity Judge that we've been building on stream recently that is nearly completed. Um, however, I really like the, the giant scythe weapons that that thing came with, so I'm not sure that I want to completely replace those. This plastic is a little damaged here, but it's probably fine. Um, let me get out my cutting mat so that we can open these bags uh, while I talk. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to end up using this with that kit, with that Zero Gravity Judge or not. Um, or if I'm going to use it for something else. Or I might use it for two different kits, right? Because you could use the, the blade weapons in one scenario and then uh, use the, the gun part for something, you know, with some entirely, completely different kit or something like that. So there are a few options. Um, it's molded in this plastic. It's not a pure white. It's kind of a slightly grayish white. Um, I guess that's how I'd describe it. So two of these, this runner. And this little tiny bit that's in here is just a couple of connector pieces, looks like. These are polycaps, though. So or at least I assume so, because it says PC right there. Um, yeah. Get these out of the way and see what else we have here. I assume we've got two more of these somewhere as well, because this gray part is obviously the inside of the blade. And I know we're building four of those in total. I think there is a version of the blade weapon where all four of them are combined into a single thing, like a double-sided, double, double, -sided, double edged blade. Um, so if I do end up using this with the Zero Gravity Judge, uh, I will probably use it in that form. So give it some sort of giant two-handed blade weapon to hold onto. These look like parts of the gun, like the stock part of the gun. Um, lots and lots of good detail on here as well. So if you wanted to mask and paint, there's a lot of stuff, or just hand paint even, I guess. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. 
not a ton of parts here. Uh, well, I guess maybe there's more than I think. Or more than it seems. There's a few big ones on some of these. Uh, and this is not really a gray, it's kind of a bluish gray. It's like a dark, slightly bluish gray. Um, we have a very large sheet of water slide decals with this kit. Um, the interesting thing is they come in all different colors, right? So there's there's some reds, some oranges, some grays, and some blues um, in all of these markings. And I think you're meant to use them all together. We'll see just in a minute here in the instructions. So as is the case with many UGL and uh, resin kits if you or yeah if you've ever built one of their resin conversion kits they come with like this giant instruction manual that is more like a photo book than an instruction manual and this one has that too so it's a really really thick book here and it's super high quality paper like the pages are really nice it's like you know thick almost cardstock type paper um, so we'll take a quick look through that before we get started here because um, I bet that there's some interesting photography and stuff going on inside of that manual. Uh, and there's an extra piece of paper here as well. We'll take a look at that too. Actually, let's look at that first. It looks like some sort of addendum to the instructions, um, just to clarify some things. Uh, and I can't read any of it, but... I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go along. A couple of extra uh, stuff down, things down here related to the decal markings as well. So there's that. Um, let's get these out of the way. Take a look through this book real quick. Yeah, so this is what I was expecting. Uh, my lighting is gonna, I'll try to hold it up at an angle here so that the lighting doesn't shine off of it too badly for the cameras. Um, but yeah, super high quality photos of the kit all built. Actually, these might be renders rather than photos. Um, either way, nice high quality uh, reference images if you want to build it and paint it and detail it in the same way that they have designed for it to be. So this is the, the uh, trident weapon itself up here, and it's got two of those blade parts mounted in sort of the middle, or with the gun in the middle there. And then here's some other variations that we can do. So here's like the blade, two of the blades put together. Here's two of them put together that way. And then somewhere there, yeah, down here is the big version that's got the double blade on both sides um, for some sort of handheld weapon. And then here's a nice view of, uh, if I zoom in here, maybe you can see there's all of the different uh, details, the markings on there in all different colors. And actually it doesn't look too bad. I, when I first saw the decal sheet, I thought, wow, that's a lot of different colors for, um, you know, just a single weapon unit. But they're well placed, I think, um, to add a lot of detail without looking too bad. Um, so here's the contents. Some more nice photography of the runners. Um, some warnings and such. Here's our list of the runners that we have available, which we've already seen because I opened them already. Um, some quick instructions about how to cut the parts out. And then here are the instructions themselves. So it looks like they want us to build the four anti-ship blades, they called them, first. And then the gun stock. And then the beam pistol, the gun barrel, which is a couple pages. And then here they start to show you how you can combine the different parts to make the electromagnetic railgun, then the trident, then the they called it a rapier, which I guess maybe rapier is the idea there. Um, heavy sword and then heavy double sword. There's more pages to this. We're only like halfway through this book at this point. Um, so here's the decal guide for most of the parts, it looks like. And then maybe, yeah, there's a couple more here on the next page for the smaller bits of the gun. And then here they have, looks like some, uh, examples of painted versions of this yeah showing if you use the their anchorette paints which 
colors they used for different areas here. So you can get some idea of ways that you could paint it. Um, here's a version where the main parts of the swords here are painted in blue. And the piping is in red. That looks nice actually with the swords in blue. I could do something like this and do that with the zero gravity judge because of its white and blue scheme. Um, yeah, maybe. Here's a version in greens. That's interesting. Yeah, actually the swords look nice in green too. So yeah, and then we're at the end. So yeah, this is one of those books like you will probably want to keep it after you're done building um, and just use it like as a photo reference book, not just for this kit itself, but like for um, inspiration on other things you might want to build as well. Okay, I'm going to set these water slides out of the way. And somewhere where they'll be safe and not get scratched up. Over here seems fine. And uh, yeah, we'll get started on the build of the four blade weapons. Might be a little repetitive, but also it doesn't look like they're that many parts, so it's probably fine. And yeah, they use such shiny paper for the uh, this book here. It's gonna it's gonna be constantly reflecting with the lighting. So I apologize for that if it starts to get annoying. Um, yeah. Oh, also, I wanted to mention before we get started, the uh, the background music today. I say as it stops. Um, I use a service called Pretzel for uh, the royalty-free background music for the streams, which is awesome. Shout out to them; they're they're great. Um, today, I've started a station on Pretzel that's called Epic, and I'm gonna go back here and look at the description of it so I read it properly to you. So under Epic for this station, it says intense cinematic, orchestral, and pirate shanties. So, so far in the like 20 or so minutes that I've been listening to this before the stream started, I didn't hear anything that sounded like a pirate shanty. However, I am secretly hoping that sometime during today's stream, we get to hear some pirate music. So we'll see if that happens or not. Um, do I want to just cut these parts out like all four at a time and just build them all four in parallel? I think the answer is probably yes. So we'll grab definitely these because they are the handle parts. And then this other big section here is the blade. A lot of gates on these parts. Um, yeah, the other thing about this kit, I'm thinking ahead. Um, these guys have also started there have been a few announcements recently of third-party kits um, that are sort of in the same vein, but they're entire uh, mobile suits that are that have been designed by this same company um, and done as plastic kits instead of resin conversions. And so, you know, this is maybe an example of the quality and type of plastic molding we're going to get on those kits that are coming out later this year which one of them especially I'm super excited to try to get and build. So this is kind of an interesting uh, look into, you know, what the quality of those might be if they're similar and if they're, I think they're partnering with either this or a similar company to actually print them. So um, first thought, at least with these blade parts here is that there are a lot of gates and they're quite wide. So as, as is normal, I'm not going to do a lot of cleanup on these parts, like with sanding or anything like that. In this first build, I typically just try to use the uh, god hand nippers here and get as close as possible uh, without damaging the part. And then I'll go back later after disassembling the, the initial snap build and do cleanup on the parts before I paint them. So, yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time cleaning these things up, but it does look like that they're potentially going to require a bit more cleanup than we normally have to do with uh, Bandai's plastic parts. So we'll see how that goes. Um, anything else here? So, like, I have no idea what all these gray things are, but it looks like these 
bits here are definitely going to be needed by these blades. Oh, we're between songs. Maybe we get a pir pirate shanty now. Come on. I guess not. At least from the album art that came up, it doesn't look like it's a pirate shanty. It's real quiet, though. I'm assuming that we need this little tiny piece here just because it was with the others on the same runner. Um, yeah, it's right there on the instructions. So I was right, we do need it. So yeah, my plan with this is going to be similar to my normal plan with uh, deciding on what to do with certain kits or certain add-ons or whatever is to build it first take a look at it built and then you know look at it next to the zero gravity judge that is on the shelf behind me in still in sections so it's in arms and legs and stuff I still haven't top coated those final sections yet so anyway we'll take a look at this next to that not today on the stream, but I will do that at some point. And then make a decision as to whether I want to use this with that kit or do something else with it instead. Alright, so with that, I think we'll just trim these and then we'll figure out what other parts we need. We certainly need some off of the white runners. I guess I should grab this giant nub on the other side of these as well. Fortunately, that is in a spot that's not going to be visible on the outside of the kit. So even though it's leaving fairly unsightly mark, even with the nice quality nippers here, it's not going to be a problem because we won't see it. The quality of the plastic itself does seem quite good. Um, just the runner design might be a little bit questionable as far as how the uh, gates are placed on these parts. Like this one here, it has a ton of them. They're obviously assuming that you're going to do some manual cleanup and then probably paint these parts. Like it'd be hard to build this, I think. Um, just scratch build it and have it look really really good because you're gonna definitely end up with some very visible um, nub marks that require quite a lot of cleanup I'm also gonna cut these just a little bit higher than I normally would because I don't want to accidentally cut too much and then have to repair damaged plastic. So normally I would cut these nubs like this way. I don't know if I can explain on camera. Like, so they're long, they're rectangular and they're long this way. Normally I'd cut them this way 
but with this kit I think I'm turning I'm turning it 90 degrees and I'm going this way I think that's turning out to be a better approach um, because I'm leaving a little bit more of the nub behind there which will require some sanding later but I'm in less danger of accidentally uh, cutting too deep just based on the way that these uh, gate marks are shaped like the way they connect to the part is a little bit different um, usually Bandai's gates are they kind of angle down at the point where they contact with the part and it gives your nippers if you go on in this way it gives your nippers a nice little spot to purchase against like to sort of guide themselves to the most optimal spot to cut the plastic Though these gates are not that way. So, yeah. I'm finding it just requires a slightly different technique than my normal one to make sure I don't cut too much of the plastic off. Yeah, like that one's going to require quite a bit of extra cleanup, but that's fine. It's not in a spot that's going to impact, negatively impact our assembling the kit right now. see if I can do better with this one now that I know that that's a little more tricky nah not really the way that the nippers fit in there it's not possible to get any closer I guess I could do this way and that would work as long as I am again careful because of the different angle not to trim too much. Yeah, that worked out okay. Hey, how's it going? All right, so four copies of all of these parts so far. And I don't know what else we need, so let's figure that out, I guess. And then we'll put together four giant swords. Um, okay. So definitely something off of here. Maybe everything off of here. We need that one for sure. And these two and those two. I'm not sure about this. Yes, this piece and this piece. We need those as well. So yeah, everything off of these runners. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. I'm uh, quite excited this morning because, as I was saying when the stream started, this, uh, this kit is something that I had my eye on for a while and I couldn't get a copy. And then I found a copy, but it was from a foreign retailer to where I live, so I had to uh, have it shipped to me, and then it got stuck in customs, and finally it has arrived. So this is something I've been wanting to build for a while, and potentially I'm gonna use on as an add-on for my zero gravity judge that I'm currently building. Um, and I was hoping to have built it like a month ago, but because of the delays, not until today.
Maybe I should have just uh, cut all of the parts out of every single runner before we started here. Because it seems like that's what we're going to end up doing. I'm going to start tossing these on the floor because we're not going to need them once they're uh, empty. There should be two more as well of this same set of parts somewhere over there in the box. But maybe, since I think this is all of the parts we're going to need to build two of these four swords, let's go ahead and after I trim the nubs off of these two, we'll build these two and then I'll go back and find the other parts for the other two. Yeah, the music is on random, so it's not something I picked out, but it has been pretty good so far today. That's interesting. My nippers are starting to squeak a little. This pair of god hands is kind of old at this point. I've had it for, I don't know, like three years at least. I haven't done ever any maintenance on it, so maybe they need some a little bit of sharpening and or oil. But they have been super uh, reliable and sturdy so far. I've seen pictures online of people with this particular brand and the exact same pair of nippers um, showing like that it, the blade broke or something like that. I haven't had any of those kind of problems with these which is great. Did I trim that part off of this? I guess I did. Okay. Yeah, again with this part, well all these parts, but here's a good, a good example. I'm leaving a little bit extra plastic more than I normally would. Just because these gates are designed in such a way that they are not quite as easy to cut them and have the plastic be perfectly flush as the Bandai kits that I'm normally used to making, but that's fine because we can sand these later. We're not going to do that here on stream, I'll do it. I'll disassemble this and clean up the parts before painting them later on. some weird background noise coming from outside of my studio. I think one of my neighbors has decided to 
either mow their yard or do some sort of other loud uh, equipment based work out in their yard. It doesn't quite sound like a lawnmower. It might be like a chainsaw or something. I'm not sure. So if you hear background noise, I apologize. That's what it is. Hopefully the music is loud enough to cover it up. Almost done with these and then we can see how these parts start to go together. I'm not sure yet what the fit will be like. Anytime it's a new manufacturer, um, I'm never quite sure whether the parts are going to fit well or they're going to need some extra work. So let's find out, shall we? All right, looks like we need this and this, and this only goes a specific direction, so let's make sure that I understand which is the top and which is the bottom of this white part before I press it into place. It looks like Wow, how am I going to tell? The little, uh, the drawing here is not obvious. Oh, I see. There's this angle here. Okay, perfect. So now we know. This one goes on this side. And this one goes back there. So this larger, longer angled part goes toward the bottom of the handle. Then we can go ahead and sandwich these together. Even though it looks like something else fits in between there, turns out I guess it does not. That's just a detail. So they are fitting pretty well. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Um, I don't think disassembly is going to be impossible, which is why I'm going ahead and pressing them all the way together. I would, I would leave a small space if I thought that was going to be a problem. So yeah, overall, pretty good fit. Like there's a few issues here. This doesn't want to press quite all the way together. So it's not perfect. And it might be better if I uh, sand down the few little nubs that are left over, be left behind from what we did a minute ago. Oh, and that presses a little more in right there as well. Okay, so yeah, eventually you can mostly get it to fit okay. It's still wanting to separate just a tiny bit right there. Yeah, so not perfect, not as good as like a Bandai kit bit would be, but it's not bad. This slides on here. Up to right there, I guess. That's as far as it will slide, so let's assume that's correct. Let's build a second one of those. So those are the two handle bits, and it sound, looks like from the instructions we can ignore them for a bit. They actually just snap onto the back part of the blade once the blades are done. So I'm going to need definitely these two. And this little detail goes in here. And then this sandwiches should be in between.
Yeah, there's there's a little bend here. So once again, this does not feel like it's a perfect fit. However, maybe once we get the other half here sandwiched in, we can press it together, yeah, and get it to have a tighter fit. And I don't know, it's actually still, there's, you can't see it, I'm sure, here on video, but this is not wanting to press together all the way here. So for final assembly, probably the best bet is to glue these just to get a perfectly tight fit, especially right here in this spot where my where these two fingers are. It's wanting to kind of bow out away from that middle piece just a little too much. It won't affect anything um, other than just like if you look at it straight on, you might notice that it's not perfectly flush. All right, then the handle bit just slides on like this, I think. Let's make sure before I do that. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so that's nice. Um, it's hard to keep it straight. It wants to wobble a little back and forth. Paint is likely to help this all want to hold together just a little bit better as well. So this goes here. I was wondering about that. There was that exposed peg there, but they've covered it now with this piece, which is good. And then we have this larger sort of wing piece that goes here. And just snaps in like that. So that is one of the completed, what do they call them? Anti-ship blades. It's a little interesting that this, maybe this is a connection point for when you combine them later. I bet that's the case, because that looks like it's sort of unfinished right there. It has these two notches that are obviously meant to connect to something. But that's probably what that is for, is a some sort of connection that we're going to do later when we assemble the different bits into the larger combined weapons. I suppose I should put this little detail in here before I forget. Does it go that way? That's correct. Now on this one, it seems like the fit is just a little bit better here than I, than I described on that other one. So it might just be some inconsistencies between the parts. This one is fitting better. <laughs> it fits better here, but it's actually bowing out back here on the this back side of the part. Huh. And this one did not do that. Yeah, definitely didn't do that. So yeah, there are some pretty big inconsistencies, it looks like, between... the parts quality wise.
And there's the second one. It's also not wanting to stay together up here. I haven't mentioned anything about seam lines with this kit so far, and that's because I haven't noticed any bad ones yet. They're mostly hidden quite well. Like up here, there's one across the top of this blade where these two pieces come together. But once you fix the fact that they're wanting to stay a little bit apart there, so you put a little dab of glue or something there to hold that together, they've hidden that seam line in, to, in something that looks like a panel line. So that's good. All right, our other two very large white runners have the other parts that we need that match those ones we just did. So it looks like this entire half of the runner here is what we need. a really awkward uh, sort of narrow angle to trim these two nubs right here for this fin part. I guess the good thing about building this thing in the order that the instructions dictate, which you wouldn't have to do, right, because it's a whole bunch of different sort of individual components, you can build them in any order but at least they have you do these swords first because they're the repetitive bit. And once you've done the four of these, then I think everything else will be, after this, um, something unique. There aren't any more duplicates of the different assemblies that we're doing. I didn't trim that one very well, but it's fine. It won't get in the way of assembly, and I can sand it later. Having looked at the box art for this, I was expecting some of these edges and angles to be sharper than they are. So that's not to say it's not a very angular design, it certainly is. 
um, but like the top edge of this, for example, is not, like it won't hurt my finger to press this piece into place like it did with some of the parts on the Zero Gravity Judge that we just built. That one, um, like the edges were literally so sharp that when I went, especially once the parts were painted and it took a little bit of force uh, to press them together, I was actually hurting the, the ends of my fingers a bit on those parts. This one has angles for sure, but it's they're not that sharp. Just the way the plastic is molded. I suppose if you wanted them to be super sharp, you could sand them down and make them that way. So before I assemble those, I'm going to get out the tiny vacuum. Clean up the desk just a bit. All right, let's see if I can remember how this works. One, this one. So I'm going to spend less time on these other two, worrying about like pressing them together and getting the perfect fit, because I realize that that seems impossible with these parts. I'll just get them close enough. said that, this part just doesn't want to fit at all, weirdly. There we go. That was strange. Alright, so there's our two handles. This goes like this. The blade bit goes in between. I forgot to trim this nub. There we go. No, this was the right one all the time. I tried to pick it up and thought, no, that's not the right piece, but it was. This one has that same fit issue right here in the middle that is slightly annoying, but I'm going to ignore it for now. Alright, 
that goes like that, and this little bit goes up here. And this goes here. Right? So that one is done. And we have one more. Did I forget any nubs on this one? I did not. So I think these blade parts here, the gray part, would definitely look really nice um, painted in the same SMS metallics that I used for the Zero Gravity Judge. Um, one of the darker metallics, I think, would look really, really, really nice on these blades. So that is, just that by itself is leaning me towards Yes, I want to use this weapon with that kit. But again, I'll wait and see in the end how it comes out. I forgot to put these little bits here on these handles. Right, this goes there. This goes here. Those are the things that happen when you stop paying attention to the instructions. Alright, so one, two, three, four of these. and we can finally turn the page. We don't get to like combine them or anything just yet. I mean, we could, but if you're following the instructions, you don't. We have here what they call the gun stock. We get it, version of it that doesn't have the light shining on the page, there you go. I'm going to set these four sword bits just out of the way up here for now. I was just getting the runners organized so that I understood what was what there. Um, cool. So let's start here. So this is the handle of this gun, and it does look like it has this little piece that I'm cutting out right now is one of those uh, sort of little hand pegs, the little rectangular peg that fits into the palm of quite a lot of Master Grade uh, Gundam hands. So if you have a Master Grade with this that style of hand that has like the rectangular cutout right in the middle of the palm, um, this will have that little fold-out bit that can lock into that to help it hold it more securely. There are enough parts to make two of these, but the instructions only have us making one, at least for now. So that snaps in there and then pivots into the handle like that. So you can use it with the peg or without, either way. 
depending on the kit you're pairing it with, I suppose. Alright, now I need the WB runner, which I believe is this one. I think I mentioned this when we were unboxing the runners, but there's lots of nice mechanical detail molded into these parts. sits in there that way var my pirate Now I'm throwing runners around. Wait, did that one have... It did have that same vent detail. I just noticed that for the first time. So yeah, I haven't looked closely at these parts, but I keep noticing little details in the mold that I think I haven't seen before, but it was obviously the same on the other side. Let's see how these fit together. So yeah, this is just a big hollow bit with... just the one handle that sandwiches in between and I'm just kind of looking at how it goes together to make sure that I think it's going to be easy enough to disassemble it I think it will be they have nicely hidden the seam line again so it sort of fits along this edge here where you can't see it Yeah, pretty much all the way around, so that's nice. Again, the fit is a little janky. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel quite so precise as what I would hope for. But it's definitely workable. Alright, now we have some sort of little white rectangular vent covers. Looks like this piece here. And the same one on this other runner. Yes. So these, if I decide to push them all the way in place, am I going to be able to get them back out again? I think the answer is probably yes, because there is a way to access the back side of this rectangular peg if you once you separate these two large gray parts. So yeah, we can make that work. However, because I didn't sand down the nubs, um, that's going to have trouble pressing all the way in there. Um, so yeah, this is one of those parts where you're definitely going to need to clean the nubs really, really well for them to fit fully in place. I'm going to push them far enough so that they'll at least sort of be here in the right spots and then um, not worry about it beyond that because I don't think that they're going to... Yeah, they're not going to impact the 
bit of anything else around them. So that seems good enough. Fits on there and then leaves this nice detail that I liked visible it doesn't cover it so yeah you could definitely mask and paint some really nice mechanical detail into some of this vent area back here and then some of this area up here toward the front of this part but that's the end of this little uh, mini section of the build so that was not complicated at all And it'll definitely look a lot better once you get the, the the water slide markings on. If you look at the picture up here, like yeah, that certainly adds a lot more interest to it because it's only like six parts, and it's basically those two large gray ones sandwiched together with just a few little details around. So yeah, definitely paint and decal markings would will make this better than it is. Now this is the beam pistol. And again, it looks like it has one of those uh, little tabs to fit into a hand. Uh, I see, and we're gonna make the other one of those Handles that it looked like we had two parts to make two of. So I'll go ahead and get those right now as well. try real hard not to lose this small rectangular piece. In fact, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and snap it in place so that it doesn't get lost. Because we know that's where it goes and then I can just trim the nubs here. snaps in right there and folds out of the way all right now we need the last runner that we have not seen yet which is this one here and we probably need both halves of this so I'm just gonna grab them right now Cool. Anything else from here? Not right now. So do I like the design of this gun part? I'm 
Not sure yet because I haven't seen the whole thing put together. Um, however, my initial impression is that I like the, the four sword bits a lot better than I like the gun just from a design point of view so far. That might change as we see it start to come together. It seems fairly simple right now. I thought I was putting those in there, but first I need a couple of other parts. Alright, because it looks like maybe it matters which of these goes in which side, I'm going to cut them out separately so that I don't mix them up. So this one was 18 and it goes into this side and just presses in like that. So that, yeah, that gives that nice multicolored rounded detail there. We'll grab the other one and we'll put it in the other side now. It looks to me, just to my eye, like these would fit in either side, but the instructions had like the big exclamation mark to make sure that you've, that you're paying attention and placing the right one in the right spot. So maybe they are slightly different and to my eye, they just don't look different. But anyway, there's that one. All right, so now we can put this here. This handle faces this way and goes back here. And we also need one of the two poly caps, which are on this tiny runner right here. what this connection point is for so we'll find out eventually well that doesn't want to stay there either so I will carefully balance it there until I can press the opposite half in place all right now it's definitely staying there Once again, seam line nicely disguised as a panel line. So that's all good. We need the gun barrel, which I guess is this part right here. So this is what they're calling the beam pistol. Again, fairly simple. I think it'll look better once you paint it, maybe you know, mask out some areas and pick out some of the detail because there is good molded detail in the dark gray parts here. Um, and then definitely with the markings, the decal markings as pictured here, stop glaring on the instructions. Yeah. So that's that, and then the last segment, I believe it's the last segment, yeah, is what they're calling the gun barrel. And then we'll combine them all in a few different ways. It looks like we have options to build the final set of weapons that we could use.
I should probably just cut out all the rest of the parts because we'll need them eventually, I assume. Although it looks like we might have like two or three parts that are that are unused, that are duplicates, just because of the way the runners were laid out. Fourteen, right? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get these 16s as well. Do I need two of those or just one? Just one, it looks like. Because we are going to need these shortly. That didn't cut cleanly at all. That's good enough. Again, being careful on rounded areas like that, I'm just leaving a little bit of extra plastic because I can sand it down later and make a perfectly smooth rounded edge there. this goes this way. Alright, we need the little end cap piece for that other pipe. These pipes are reminding me in my uh, I have a YouTube series, video series that I've been doing lately. Not as quickly as I had originally planned, but every couple of weeks I release a new episode. It's called Blender Gunpla, and it's about using Blender to uh, 3D model add-on parts for kits. And um, one subject that I definitely need to cover that I haven't yet is how to do piping details. So looking at these nicely uh, curved and structured pipes reminds me of that. But that's something I need to put on the list of topics to cover there. else I think no not for a little while here these two just sandwiched together and those pipes that we just built go in between them so yeah this continues to be a Pretty simple, straightforward build, um, with slightly questionable part fit, um, but not terrible. Like they fit okay once you once you work with them a bit. But it definitely looks nice. So that one goes in there, and actually, that's it for then being able to put these two together. That addendum page in the instructions had, I remember this, maybe I should double check what that looked like, because I remember seeing that picture. 
Um, yeah. And I, I can't read this. I mean, I could get out my translation app, but it... Yeah. They might be asking you to put a little bit of glue in a couple spots to hold it together, because as I have noticed, the fit is not always perfect enough to get that to work. Or maybe you need to shave down a little bit of the plastic there to get this to fit together perfectly up here at the top. That's probably what they're saying. That's my guess. Just based on how mine and my specific kit here is fitting together. Yeah, it looks like that needs to press together just a little further. So something needs to be just slightly shaved off right in, right in here. That's fine. I can fix that later when I disassemble and paint and reassemble. This, sort of weirdly, goes this way. I was just talking about the nice piping details, which is still true, but this one is in a kind of weird location. It'll probably make more sense once we see the rest of the parts that go around. I guess below here there's a big gun barrel, so that kind of will pull it together, I think visually. All right, so we have some round details and there's like a lot of different ones, so I assume they're these tiny ones. Yeah. Somewhere there's a second one of those. Here it is. Now, there haven't been a lot of undergated parts on this kit, but these two circular details are. Which I guess is nice because then you're not uh, potentially damaging the perfect circle when you trim the nub. still get them off later? The answer is probably as long as I don't press them fully into place. So I'm just going to lightly put those on there, enough so that they don't fall off and get lost, but leaving a tiny gap so that I'll be able to get my um, this tool in there to remove them at a later date. All right, next, we are building the gun barrel that goes below that part that we just put together. So what we need are this bit here. The same matching one from the other runner and then something else that goes in between them. That something else is here? Yeah. This does have a specific orientation. It needs to go that way. And this goes this way. All right, 
right, so we need 19 and 20 off of here. There's more of those exclamation marks in the instructions, which I didn't pay attention at the beginning on the first page to see what that means. I think it means that it only fits one specific way which is kind of obvious anyway, because like there's flat edges there and they obviously line up with those flat edges right there. And then this one goes this way. So we have that part, which is kind of the small section of the gun barrel, and then we've got a much larger, kind of similarly constructed section. These rounded gun barrel parts are all also undergated. Does the direction matter here? Yes, almost certainly. So this rectangular opening, which is not horizontally in the middle of this part. There's a little mold defect right there. Okay, I fixed it. Needs to line up with the rectangular space underneath there. This is a tight fit, and I'm a little concerned about disassembling it later. Uh, it's probably gonna be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So now this goes on the front. We turned it the right way to figure out which is the front. There we go. And again, that's keyed, so it only fits a, at a specific orientation, like a rotation. So that lines up, this bit lines up all the way across there, so that's nice.
And this again is designed to only fit on a specific way. Let's make sure that I have that turned. Yeah, you want this wider section there, so that's correct. a slight cough coming on so luckily I remembered that I have a mute button on my microphone okay um, next what is next it looks like this is next these two halves just fit together there's nothing nothing that goes between them which is a little unusual runner is now done. So just double checking with the instructions that these two just fit together, that is true. Nothing special to go in between them. They have that same weird rectangular piece that the other half had. But it fits better in this case than it did on the other side there. Alright, and now that we have that done, we can put the gun barrel in between these two halves, and I don't think that it matters. Top versus bottom here, they're the same. So, this goes like that. All right, I feel like this song is the closest we've gotten so far to a pirate shanty, which is what was promised. Um, by the playlist when I started it long ago. Well, it was like an hour and a half ago. It said pirate shanties were going to be part of it. This sounds more like river dance maybe than pirate shanty, but it's close-ish. Alright, that's starting to look really nice. I like that. now that I'm thinking more about the idea of a pirate shanty coming on with this type of playlist is that I also when I uh, there's a switch on the music player that allows you to choose whether you want music that includes lyrics like singing or not or do you just want instrumental and I always just choose instrumental I imagine that if I turned off that selection so that it would allow songs with singing, we'd probably be more likely to get actual pirate shanties, because they probably tend to have singing in them. That got real fast at the end. I guess if you want to inspire yourself to build really fast, you could just play that. Wait, there are two of these pipes. Why did I only cut out one? Oh, maybe there is only one. I'm looking at the instructions incorrectly. All right, so this goes here.
Yeah, and then we need our other polycap. Where does this go? I see. So we want it to go with the rounded edge facing this way. And the instructions are very specific in pointing that out, so it must matter. And now, this goes here. That seems good. Yeah, this the connection between those three pieces that we stacked on the last step seemed a little bit flimsy, but once it gets put into here, it's definitely gonna hold those nice and solidly in place. Hmm, all right. And, yeah, it's just telling me there in the instructions to make sure that this polycap gets correctly seated in this little rectangular opening is designed for that which maybe is easier said than done given that I have I don't really have access in there to be able to specifically guide it into place yeah that looks right all right So yeah, this is definitely my favorite section of this gun so far, by a large margin. Twelve, is that what we want? Yes. We are not quite finished with that runner. We've got this one piece left on each of these two white runners. Okay, once again, I'm thinking about whether I'll be able to get these parts off. There is a little uh, rectangular hole underneath both of these, so you could push them out from the back. And that's probably the only reason that that's there, so props to the guys that designed these parts for including that to make it easier to disassemble them later. We've got these two little rectangular details, it looks like. Go on next. matter yes I think this larger slant goes toward the top uh, is disassembly possible yes I guess so because there's a little edge there that I can get the tool into probably this goes this way making two of, whatever they are. I'm not sure yet what they are.
We also need 10, which is this one here. Then I'll go ahead and grab the other set of those parts so that we can make the second one at the same time. realized I forgot the other little rectangular vent part that I'm gonna need which is this one here all right so let's see how this works these just sandwich together I still don't know what they're supposed to be. Why do you not fit? There we go. And then this fits over the front edge and the orientation it looks like doesn't matter. pieces I believe I think they're the last ones yeah because this runner is now done and its friend over here is we cut this part off also going to be done So these just fit over the top, is that correct? Seems like it. This way, this way, I'm so confused. This way. Oh, I see further forward like this. So we don't use those for a while, even though we've built them. We've got a couple of other little add-on bits that go on the sides of the gun to put together first. So that'll be four. Ah, 
this piece up here, I didn't even see it because it's sort of hidden in the way that the runner is designed. I must be approaching the end of the time that I normally stream because I realize I'm starting to get hungry. This has become tradition. We must finish the build before I can stop and eat lunch. Today, because we're building this thing, we probably shouldn't just finish the build. We should probably finish the build and then go through a couple of the other pages of the instructions here where it shows how the different parts combine to make a few different versions of the weapon. Because if you're watching the stream to see the weapon, it would be it would be kind of mean of me to get to the very end and then not actually assemble the different variations. So we'll definitely do that. Or maybe you're just watching the replay of the stream later on on YouTube and you've skipped to the end to see what the final thing turns out looking like, and if that's the case, I won't disappoint you by skipping that part either. Alright, so those are something. Let's see what they are. They go here. So I'm not sure what they are. Maybe they're sort of like heat sink fins. This looks like some sort of beam weapon to me. So maybe it needs some heat dissipation. Or they're probably just bits to make it look cool. That's the other option. They don't fit on very well. I mean, they're fine. They're just not perfectly lush and also not perfectly perpendicular to the curvature of the weapon itself. They're both like kind of tilted up just a little bit. So that's weird and slightly disappointing, but it's fine. It could be fixed. All right, so we need this part. Two of this part. So the other one on the other side as well. And also we need nine, which is this one. Is that it? Does that finish this runner? I think it does. Yes. All right. Yeah, so we're almost out of parts at this point. I've got one runner sitting in the box off to my left that still has like one or two parts on it. Just one part on it. So after these two parts here, we only have one part left on a runner. So I was wrong about having extra parts. It looks like we're not going to have any extra parts.
All right, let's see. So these fins go this direction. Toward the back of the gun. And then something must attach onto those. They might be the attachment points for attaching the two of the blade weapons on the sides. That's my guess. Because I know there is a variation of the weapon where you attach two of those blade weapons here on the sides. Alright, and then these two pegs go here. Just thinking about whether that's going to be... Whether I'm going to be able to take them back out again, I think I will. Yeah, seems fine. Okay, and then these two things here that we built a while ago go on to here like that and that all right and there's the end of the uh, whatever this was called the gun barrel So, let me clean up the table real quick. Vacuum up these nubs. Nice. All right, so here's what we have. The gun barrel, I believe this one was called the beam pistol. I don't remember this. Was it the gun stock? Is that what they just called that one? Yeah, this is just the gun stock. And then we have four of these swords. We'll turn these two this way. Yeah. So that's everything in the kit. And according to the instructions, we then have a few different ways we can put these together. So, we'll start with here. They're calling it this the electromagnetic railgun. We still do have one more part, and I put the nippers away. This one last part is, looks like for combining a couple of these, it sort of works as a clip to fill in a space. So let's get this real quick. All right, so gun stock, beam pistol, they fit together somehow. So this just fits in the back of here. Now one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to paint this, like some of these fits are very tight, and so I could see for sure there'd be a danger of potentially rubbing the paint off where these parts fit together. Um, so you might want to decide ahead of time how you want to assemble the weapon. And like if you wanted this beam pistol to be separate again, you probably don't want to do what I just did because you'd scrape the paint off and you'd have to repair that. All right, so that goes together like that. And then this goes into the poly cap that was inside the back of this. And it just snaps together like so. So we have this very long beam weapon. I like how the piping all sort of lines up up there at the top. All right, so that is an option. Um, then we can add some things to it. We can grab two of these sword bits and it looks like we have to take off 
this fin and this part right here. And then if we do that, we can attach these onto the sides here. So yeah, there's nice, there's a nice solid attach point for sure. Right there. Wow, it's so solid that I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Also, it doesn't quite line up because like I said, when we put these things together, they weren't perfectly uh, perpendicular. So it's probably better to put that in first and then flip this in here. Wow, that fit is very, very tight. Okay. So I don't want to force this and break it. However, I do want to get it assembled so that you can see it. So. Okay, new plan. So this is a great idea for how this goes together. However, in practice, it is a bit scary to actually get it to fit together. So I'm going to do a close approximation without pressing these pieces fully in to, to their snapped in arrangement. because I don't want to break anything and I want to be able to later disassemble this and change its configuration. So we'll do this, which is close enough for now. So you end up with this type of a weapon. So it's just the gun with two giant swords kind of attached, just uh, providing decoration, I guess. So that's an option. Uh, we have this very simple option of attaching two of these swords back to back to make ourselves a sort of double bladed two handed style weapon. Hmm. Once again, easier said than done, looks like, just based on the angle that they fit together. And they will, but that's good in this case because it'll fit nice and tightly. Yeah, and again, I don't want to necessarily break any of these parts, so I'm going to just approximate it for you, but you end up with this kind of a double-bladed weapon like that. And then the final configuration, I believe, is that we can take i need these other two sword bits here so let's grab those and take these off of there if i can there we go all right so now it wants us to actually flip one of these uh handles over so you pull this out and you flip it over 180 degrees and you fit it in this way and then we probably need to take these extra fins off of here so that they can fit together. And we put these two together like... Oh, I see. This goes there. Okay. And then those fit together like that. All right, let's do the same thing over here. So we flip one of these over. If I do use this weapon with my zero gravity judge that I've been working on, it probably is in this configuration that we're just about to see here. Not the gun. Um, and not the... Uh, 
Yeah, not any of the gun variations, but probably this giant double-bladed sword-type weapon. So then once we have this, I think we can put these two together as we would have done with the double-bladed regular sword. So this is just like double-bladed double sword. Um, I'm not sure why this is so like it might be easier to do this and then slide this in there it almost certainly is easier to do it that way but there is some there's a slight bend on these handles and so what happens is when this one lines up and wants to fit in correctly into the opposite side of this clasp clasp piece this piece that holds it all together then it's out of alignment with the other. So that's interesting. Yeah, but once you get it together, it stays pretty well. So here's this big double-bladed sword weapon, which is a bit flimsy like this way. It wants to bend for sure. But um, yeah, if you're careful how you pose it with a kit, you could probably make this work. So yeah, maybe this is the the uh, thing that I end up using with that zero gravity judge, we'll see. I think that's it. I think those are all the variations. Ow, as I stab myself with the sword, perfect. Um, yeah, the rest of the book we looked at at the beginning of the stream, so if you're interested, you can page back and find that, but there are lots of photos of this thing built and painted, and a few different suggested color schemes to paint it in as well. Let me put these two back on here. So yeah, if I end up using this giant sword by itself, then you still have this beam weapon, um, which is a little strange because it has some obvious attach points here for something that's missing uh, when it doesn't have those blades on it. But um, yeah, I wonder if I could. No, there's nothing here I could attach with these extra fin parts. But yeah, so you'd have this very large beam weapon to use potentially with a different kit if you wanted to keep them separate. So yeah, that's... We'll just arrange this. This is everything that comes with it. Now that it's been kind of assembled into some of its weapons, some of its variations. There we go. Yeah, so fairly simple build. Um, but lots of good detail in these parts, and I like how they turned out. And I'll definitely use this for something. Whether I use it on the Zero Gravity Judge or something else is yet to be determined. I'll have to think about it and look at it next to the, those that and a few other kits and then make a decision. Um, but yeah, if you can find this, it's, I know it's hard to find at, these, at this point, at least it was for me. Um, I definitely recommend picking it up. Um, it's a cool looking weapon and you can, you can, I can imagine a lot of different uses for it. So yeah, um, I think that's the end. I had fun building this one. Uh, it was fairly simple, like I said, but also nicely detailed. The fit problems aren't terrible, like they're definitely there, um, but with a little bit of sanding and trimming of some of these parts, which I will do when I disassemble and then reassemble it, um, you can definitely make things fit correctly, I think. Um, and it looks good when you're done. So I don't think you can ask for more than that. Awesome. All right. Well, that'll do it for me. I am hungry, so I'm going to go eat lunch. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. And I don't know what or when we'll be building next, um, but I will see you next time. Have a good day.